Good afternoon, Colts Nation. Welcome back to another episode of the No Horsing Around podcast. As always, I am one of two dudes talking Colts. I'm your host, Stephen Burton, and I wanted to jump on this afternoon to kind of do the (sighs) 24 hours out. My boy Zach did his instant reaction video. Y'all blew that up. Uh, so thank you Colts Nation for that and if you've watched that and you liked it please make sure that you're hitting that lovely subscribe button follow us anything that you want Apple Spotify iHeartRadio we're partial to YouTube so make sure you smash that subscribe to our channel Um, I wanted to take a minute here a day after a day later and kind of jump on here and give you guys kind of the good the bad and the ugly from week one's 28-16 28-16 loss to the Seattle Seahawks. So obviously not the way we wanted to start the season. Continue to not be able to win an opening game. Knew it was going to be a struggle this season. Knew that it might be a little more difficult than seasons past. Last year could should have been a little, you know, a little layup. It was the Jaguars. No pooed the bet on that one and it was the only one they got all season and it probably got them trevor lawrence in all honesty uh but this season we knew it was gonna be a little bit tougher we're going up against an amazing opponent in the seattle seahawks we as in us here at no horsing felt fairly confident we thought that it would be an interesting game we thought the colts would probably pull it out we were wrong um so let's let's kind of let's not hesitate let's kind of jump right into this um Let's start with what was good. So good, in my opinion, there was a couple of them. I actually might be in the minority here. I thought Carson played pretty well. Carson, in my opinion, played within the system during the game. Uh, I know there's a lot of complaints about there was a lot of check downs. There was a lot of uh, throwing to the running back in the flat, a lot of short routes across the middle. Didn't take a lot of deep shots. I think... That was him playing within the system. He didn't make any horrible plays. He didn't make the decision where you're like, oh, my God, you've got to be kidding me. Why did you chuck the ball down the field into triple coverage? You know what we saw from Phillip last year, honestly. We didn't see that from Carson today. 25 of 38, 251 yards, two touchdowns, four rushes for 23 yards. I think it's important, and I I throw that stat with four rushes for 23 yards up because – they were crucial rushes too. A lot of times they were evading some pressure, picking up a couple extra yards, picking up a couple first downs. I want to say probably two of those four were for first down runs. So I, I think he played within the system. He played also. There were times that he probably held the ball. I would put maybe two of those sacks that he had on him watching the game. But also when you get beat up, and we're going to get to this here in just a few minutes. When you don't have time, you guys have heard me say it. I said it about like the Bengals drafting Jamar Chase and stuff like that. You can't be a downfield strike team if your quarterback is throwing from his back the entire game. And Carson got beat up. Ryan Kelly said it after the game. Uh, It's a damn shame, but we got to see how tough he is. Ryan Kelly took a lot of blame. Um, Carson did have the muff snap with Ryan Kelly, and that wasn't good. Carson also after the game said, you know, we didn't play complimentary football. When the defense got stops, we couldn't produce as an offense, and that's not how you win games. So he, uh, he, he was humbled, but at the same time, I feel like he played about as well as you could in this game. I will agree with Zach on his video that he dropped yesterday that it's kind of tough to judge because of how bad the O-line did play. Um, you know, other good, in my opinion – Second half defense. The the second half defense is good in comparison because of how poor they played in the first half. But second seven points allowed. I mean, they, they did a great job. They got several crucial stops. They kept the Colts in the game, but the offense couldn't produce in the second half. It was a tale of two halves. So, I mean, they got the pressure they needed. They got some sacks. They, they produced kind of what they needed to do to keep the Colts in the game. But like last season – you're just looking at it again going, man, how deep a hole can you dig? You know, I'm sitting there watching the game, and it's like, man, when I knew the Colts wouldn't get the ball to open the second half, you're just going, man, don't give up the big play. Don't give up the big play at the end of the half. And what do they do? Give up a massive play. And then 
you know Seahawks are getting the ball at the beginning of the second half, and it could snowball. So, I mean, I liked the resiliency. I think I even put out a tweet in the middle after halftime saying, you know, we were known as a team that could adjust at the half last year. Let's see if they continue to do it. They obviously can. I would love to see them put together a full game. But bear in mind, you guys, too, the good is also it's week one. There are 17 games this year, okay? There's plenty of time for them to make adjustments, okay? So that's the good. The bad. Y'all, the first half defense was horrendous. Horrendous. Just tough to watch. They couldn't stop a nosebleed. They were they were horrible. Horrible. Gave up three passing touchdowns, 21 points, 166 passing yards. And these weren't small dink and dunks. These were chunk plays, which is what the Colts defense is predicated on stopping. And they couldn't do it. I don't know if the Seahawks were giving them looks. I know beforehand when we previewed the game for you guys, the concern was always Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson is a future Hall of Fame quarterback, and he showed every bit of that on Sunday. Showed every bit of that ability on Sunday. He would get out of the pocket, break containment, and make a big play. Yes, the Colts, until the very end of the game, I feel like they held DK Metcalf in check, but they let Tyler Lockett go off. They had a hard time with Chris Carson. Uh, He was big, bruising. He wore them down. But the first half defense looked lost, just like they didn't know what was going on. They were seeing something brand new. So they they get in my bad. Another part, questionable play calling, possibly. I've gotten a lot of, over the last day, a lot of questions from you guys about Reich's play calling when it comes to the fourth down play calls you're in the territory do you take the points and then to start the start the game you do take the points instead of trying to go for it on fourth down so it's tough and then on obviously the the glaring one is the fourth and two and you put carson in shotgun reich said after the game that he liked kind of the the movement and the rpo and how it can be kind of confusing for the rushers on who's going to keep the ball so he liked his his chances, and that's what we've always talked about, going back to last year too, is sometimes Reich does outthink himself. He does. Sometimes he's the smartest guy in the room, and sometimes that's just too smart. And that may have been one of those situations you wish, because I'm sitting there watching the game going, well, they need 18 points, and there's no way to get that in two drives, and you got six minutes left. It's just a tough ask. Um, So questionable at times. I've always liked Reich's aggressiveness. But you, you're you within every right as a fan to question continuing to go for it on fourth down when you really do need some points. Uh, so let's round it out, you guys, with the ugly. The O-line. Holy shit. The O-line, four sacks, 15 hits on 41 dropbacks for Carson. If they don't get it fixed, Carson will not make it through the season. It's that simple. It was like watching Andrew Luck again in the backfield. And I'm not talking about bombs down the field. I'm talking about car crashes in the backfield. It was it was tough. You felt for him. He was supposed to come. This O-line was supposed to be legitimate. And Davenport looked like a turnstile on the outside. They were constantly getting pressure in him. And if you wonder why he wasn't taking shots down the field, that's your reason when you have two, 2.3 seconds, somewhere around there to get rid of the ball. You don't have time for these late developing routes. You just don't. I mean, he was constantly, I don't have the number in front of me. I was trying to find it before I recorded, but he was just hit too. So many times pressured so many times. And he, sometimes he made chicken salad out of chicken shit. There was an occasional time he'd slipped it. And he got a couple yards running or he had a great pass or he bulleted it. But it's tough. It's tough when you're constantly being hit. And the O-line did not look like what we have come as Colts fans to expect from the O-line, which is the preeminent one in the league and, frankly, a weapon for the Colts to beat people down into the submission. So, I mean, it was not it was not good to watch. It was not easy to watch. 
your franchise quarterback get beat up and there was just nothing you could do about it because you couldn't run the ball either. The O-line in general got no push today, none. So Fisher, be nice if you can get back a little quicker as long as you're healthy. We, we, we might need that. Uh, and, but also, you know, just remember too, as we kind of finish this out, just remember you guys also that it is week one. They didn't have a ton of time together because of injuries and COVID and all these different things that took place in the preseason. So they're still gelling. And we have done pretty well in the past and not opened up, you know, hair on fire week one. Hell, we lost to a team that won one game and the Jaguars last year and went all the way to the playoffs and darn near beat the Buffalo Bills. Other thing to remember, too, is it could be worse. You could be a Titans fan who got blown out at home by the Cardinals, who were unsure of how good they are. Let's be honest, we are unsure. But also, they lost. Jags lost. Chiefs almost lost. Bills did lose. It's week one. Take a deep breath. Come off the ledge. Fan is short for fanatic, and I'm there with you guys, but take a deep breath. It will be okay. We will figure it out, okay? Like we always say, too, please, you guys, if you like this stuff, make sure you're subscribing to the YouTube channel. Make sure you're liking the video. Make sure you're sharing it with a friend. Tell a friend. Get them all involved. We're kind of pushing and moving, and we're, we're trying our best to keep gaining and keep having you guys join this No Horsing Around family. We love you guys for it. You guys really showed out on Zach videos. Hopefully, you guys can do the same on this one. Look for more content coming this week as we prepare for the Rams next week. It's going to be interesting. Got to get the win. As always, I end it the same way every time. I love you. I know Zach loves you. I'm out of here.